All right, evaluate this definite integral here. So you can see our integrand involves root 16 minus x squared. So if we look back at our little table, you can see that we're going to try something like x equals 4 sine theta. Now, even if you've learnt this stuff before, and you go, come on, Chris, I, I know this. You may have not been t told all the um, ins and outs of it. So, for example, the theta here is between minus pi on 2 and pi on 2. Can anyone suggest um, why that is? Yes, yeah, up the back. Excellent, yes. Okay, this isn't taught at school, for example, or I don't think it is. It's important where your theta, the, like some bounds on your theta, because sine inverse doesn't exist everywhere. So you've got to restrict the theta to where sine inverse exists. Very good. Okay, so that's a small thing. So the dx is going to be 4 cos theta d theta. So what, because this is a definite integral, I'm going to change the limits of integration as well. Okay? So if x equals 0, what's theta going to be? Zero, right. And for x equals 4, oh, sorry. Theta is going to be pi on 2. Good. So we've got all the elements now to make our substitution. Hopefully, hopefully, it's going to be simpler. So let's call um, this star. So we replace dx with this, x with this, and the limits of integration. So we're going to get 16 sine squared theta times 16 minus 16 sine squared theta times 4 cos theta d theta. Now, you may look at this and go, um, Chris, you've just contradicted what you said at the start of the lecture. We're supposed to make these things simpler. Come on. Well, yeah, I, I agree with you. It's a mess. But can we make it simpler? First of all, we can go to town on that square root sign. Right? That's a good start. Let's try to, let's try to do that, right? So what can I replace 16 minus 16 sine squared theta with? Yeah, 16 cos squared theta, right? And then take the square root. So if I factor that out, well, I guess if I... Uh, let's just do it. All right, so now I can eliminate that square root sign... And I'm going to get something like sine squared theta times 16 cos squared theta, right? Oh. Now, when I'm taking the square root sign there, technically I should have absolute values. Can anyone tell me why I can ignore the absolute values? Absolutely. Right? Again, it comes back to this little thing. Cos theta is positive there. Well, non-negative. <laughs> so I don't need to worry about the absolute values. Yes? Um, 
Yeah, but, but it's 16 times 4 times 4. Is that, is that right? Okay, good. Okay, so now what? Now I've got one of those examples that we kind of looked at in the last lecture. Well, what I'm going to do here is use um, double angle formulas. So I'm going to combine that sine and cosine into the following. Okay, so all I've done there is I've used a double angle formula which I have to square. All right, well, expanding this square, I can get the following. We're almost, we're almost there. Anything I can do with this sine squared 2 theta? Some, does someone say double angle formula? Yes. We're going to do a double angle formula involving 2 theta. So we get the, the 2 theta is going to go to something involving 4 theta. Okay, so you may be thinking, come on, Chris, this is a lot of work. I haven't, I haven't done the integration yet. Well, we can do that now. All right. We've done all the necessary groundwork to do the integration. All right, so when you integrate 1, you're going to get theta. When you integrate minus cos 4 theta, you're going to get something like minus 1 quarter sine 4 theta. Okay, so all you need to do now is do the substitution. You're going to get 16 pi. I won't bore you with all the little details. 